Hey, and welcome back. So, let's finish up now with the WAC. The WAC over here um, is basically represented by this table. Um, I actually think he gives you this in the exam, but if he doesn't, or if you practice enough, you'll know it anyway, um, so you'll be able to draw it out. Um, basically, <laughs> this is the component of capital that is being used. Um, so we had our five components, we had the bank loan, the bonds, but those uh, together are really just debt, and they're calculated in the very same way. Um, preferred stock, common stock, and retained earnings. Now, from those previous videos, you'll be able to calculate, you know, percentages um, for the cost. So, let's just say that, you know, the company used um, bonds, um, and the cost came out at, uh, let's say, six percent. They used, uh, um, let's say, preferred stock, and the cost came out at five percent. Common stock came out at you know 5.5 percent, and then they didn't decide to use retained earnings. Remember, they don't need to use all of these; they just need to use uh, anywhere between one and all five of them. Um, you know, according to according to what the analysts or the risk analysts say in terms of uh, you know calculating risk profiles and you know what they should be using for for capital. And let's say the company have gone out to raise a total of uh, 10 million dollars, and they've decided to raise two million dollars using bonds, three million dollars um, of preferred stock, and five million dollars of common stock. So that brings us to a total of ten. Now, what's the weight of each of these components uh, within the overall ca uh, capital structure? So two out of ten uh, is twenty percent. Three out of ten is thirty percent. And then 5 out of 10 is 50%. Now, you may have seen this before in accounting, uh, when you calculate the, uh, the average cost of inventory um, you know, using the, the average method. Um, but it's basically just a regular uh, weighted average, and all you have to do is take the cost and multiply it by the weight. So, so all that leaves you with is 20% of 6%, which comes out to 1.2%. 30% of 5% comes out to 1.5%, and then 50% of 5.5 comes out to 2.75%. And then to calculate the overall whack, oh yeah, of course, before we carry on, we can just do a, you know, like a, a balance check over here, that 20% plus 30% plus 50% is 100%. Um, so that obviously over there represents that a hundred percent of all our funds um, of you know the total of ten million dollars are being raised using these three components according to their three respective costs of capital and according to their individual weightings within the overall capital structure um, then taking the average um, <coughs> sorry the weighted average which is just done by k multiplied by the weight so six percent times twenty percent percent respectively and then adding those together gives us our final work so that comes out to 5.45 percent and that is our overall work so we can now say this over here 5.5 percent uh, is the work of this company so the weighted average cost of capital equals 5.45% and get very familiar with this table because it's very possible that he will not give you, you know, first of all the cost of capital you're going to have to calculate, there's no question about that, but he's not just going to give you, you know, well bonds um, and then you calculate it, it comes out to 6% and then he's going to tell you they're raising $2 million and then, you know, with preferred stock he's going to tell you they're raising $3 million. It could also be, um, you know, a matter of you know that he tells you that they're raising two million dollars through bonds. Um, oops, raising two million dollars through bonds. Um, but then he could tell you, you know, just to kind of change things up, that thirty percent of the funds are coming through preferred stock, and then he might even say, um, well, the rest is coming through, you know, common stock. So, you know, you're, you're going to have to navigate around this table. He might tell you that 30% of the funds are coming from preferred stock, in which case you know that 30% of 10 million is 3 million. Um, so, you know, you could, you could fill out this table yourself. Um, and then the rest, well, you know, if we have to get to a weighting of 100%, the rest is obviously 50%, because, you know, 100% minus 30 minus 20 leaves us with a 50% outstanding that comes from common stock. So, just 
get very familiar with this table and now have to navigate around it and, and kind of fill in uh, fragments of information that he might give you because it might not be as straightforward as just telling you the dollar values. Um, if he doesn't tell you the dollar values and he just tells you the weights, then that's even better because the dollar values are kind of supplementary. What we really care about is you know, the cost of capital, the weight that that cost is in the capital structure so that we can calculate the weighted average. Um, so it might be that he leaves the whole dollar amount out in the first place, but you know, if he doesn't and he kind of... Um, and it kind of shifts around using dollar values and percentages. The main columns here are obviously K, weight, and then to calculate the work. So this might be supplementary, but you might have to use it in order to calculate the percentages as part of the overall total of the money that is being raised. So that brings you out to an overall work. Now, just in case that isn't clear enough, um, or you know, you kind of want to think about this in a uh, formulaic version, then we could just write that the work is equal to the weight of debt multiplied by the cost of debt after tax, of course, plus the weight of common stock multiplied by the cost of common stock. And you can obviously see where I'm going here, plus the weight of preferred stock multiplied by the cost of preferred stock. And then finally, if there's retained earnings, then you would say the weight of retained earnings multiplied by the cost of retained earnings. And that, of course, would bring you to the WAC. This you know, formula over here is essentially what this table is doing. Um, it's exactly what this table is doing. Um, so you know, this table can be translated into a formula, which is just uh, this good stuff right here. Um, now let's try and try and apply this work a little bit. How how do we think about this work, and you know how how would we use it? So obviously it's kind of abstract at the moment that the cost of capital to the firm is 5.45 percent. What does that really mean? Well, most of the time, you know, like we said, the company is going to divide its capital structure between you know the different components. Um, so you know by taking the weighted average, we can see exactly how much interest the company has to pay for every dollar that it borrows or you know kind of issues. So if a project requires you know x amount of capital then the company is going to attach a weight to each component you know as we did this w um or in the table you know this column over here so the whack is really our hurdle rate what we call the hurdle rate and it's called the hurdle rate because it's the rate we need to kind of hurdle over we need to jump over in order to make profit um so let's kind of take this whack and apply it to a real problem um using net present values and this might be a, a pretty good uh, a way to see how the WAC works, um, and also uh, to kind of apply it to a real net present value situation. So let's say that a company um, is you know, sales revenue, um, sales expense, let's say, uh, depreciation, um, and then what we will call EBIT, the earnings before interest and taxes, then tax, and then the cash flow after tax. This is something you may have seen in class, but it's it's pretty basic, and, and you know we'll just run through it very quickly. So. And let's just do the first couple of years to see what this really means. Um, so. Let's say in year one and year two, the company has sales revenue of, let's say, five million dollars. Uh, their expenses are four million dollars. Depreciation, let's say, is 0 0.2. Now their earnings before interest and taxes are just going to be, you know, it's going to be their revenue minus their their expenses and you know their expense on sales and their expense on depreciation so 5 minus 4 is 1 minus 0 0.2 and this earnings before interest and tax will just be uh, 0 0.8 now tax let's just say the tax rate is 10 percent so 10 percent of earnings before interest and tax is just going to be 0 0.08 because it's 10 percent of this um, and then the cash flow after tax is interesting because it's going to be the earnings before interest and tax minus the tax. So that's 0 0.8 minus 0 0.08, which comes out to 0 0.72. Um, 
but the interesting to no thing to note here is that the cash flow needs to add back depreciation and if you've done accounting then you understand this fully and that's because depreciation needs to be removed before we take tax um, because you know there's a there's a tax shield on depreciation um, which means that depreciation is shielded from being taxed and that's because it's not a real cash outflow so our actual cash flow over here is 0 0.72 plus 0 0.2 we need to add the depreciation back plus 0 0.2 so that equals 0 0.92 and you know that would be our cash flow from the first year and then we'd continue on so if you had a table that he gave you and told you that the revenues were consistent even all the expenses change to three and then you know depreciation maybe this is a a 10 year um, you know lifespan or you know a three year lifespan even um, and this depreciation is at 0 0.2 every single year for 10 years for example um, you know just you'll be able to calculate that whether it's straight line um, or some of the years digits or, or double declining balance he'll he'll obviously tell you about that um, but just remember that the way that you calculate the cash flow after tax is always by taking tax off the earnings before interest and tax but then adding back the depreciation afterwards and what you would do is you would continue on to fill out this table until you have a bunch of cash flows um, because it's cash flow that we really care about now the way to calculate the net present value of all those cash flows is simply by bunging them in so you know CF0 is going to be our initial costs um, so that will be the initial cost of, of capital you know, for if it's buying a machine, it will be the the money uh, spent. You know, in order to purchase the machine, um, then there'll be shipping costs, um, which need to be factored in, um, installation costs. Uh, basically, those three um, need to be thought about. There's also opportunity costs, um, but I don't I don't think that he'll, that he'll go into that. And then CF1, CF2, just these cash flows that you calculate over here. So we got our CF1 as 0 0.92, um, so 0 0.92, um, and you know CF2 would be would be whatever we calculate from this line, and so on and so forth. Um, and obviously you've put those all into the calculator. Now the question is, what is I? Um, or R, you know, what do we put into the calculator as I? Well, big gaping answer there is the WAC. The WAC will go in in order to discount all of these cash flows back to the present in order to find the net present value um, of those cash flows. So, you know, once you do that, um, perhaps, you know, the way to, to do in terms of a capital budgeting perspective is if it comes out positive, if it comes out greater than zero, then you would accept the project. And if it comes out negative, then your weighted average cost of capital is obviously way too high and it's discounting these cash flows way too much to the point where your net present value is actually negative. Um, so that's the way that the WAC can actually be applied in real life. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this part. So um, that's the end of chapter what used to be 10, I'm not sure what it is in the new book, uh, but that deals with basically everything from capital structure. Um, we did cost of debt, cost of equity, um, we put it all into the WAC and then applied the WAC as an interest rate to discounting uh, cash flows back to the present in order to find a net present value. Um, and in the next video we're going to move on to capital budgeting techniques, um, which is you know still from the side of the corporation, um, but really the question we're asking ourselves is how do corporations make decisions um, in terms of whether to invest or not? And then that will bring us to the end of this series.